So hello and welcome to uh, Film Exologist, the place on the internet thingy where uh, service user convenience is discussed. Now case in point, this unit here, I've got this uh, 600 CFM Holly List 1850 classic uh, to restore. But this has a very nifty feature in here, which is something that, that is sometimes called the quick change kit. Um, and basically what this allows you is to very quickly change the springs in the secondary. So in this episode, what, what I'm going to be doing, obviously I'm going to be rebuilding the car, cleaning it, you know, getting it to work, get it nice. But also what I'm going to be doing is I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to explain how to maintain, set up, and all the variables that come into holy vacuum secondaries, especially with this quick change kit, which is really what you want if you are trying to get the most out of a car, you're, you're trying to tune it. This is really what you want uh, in, to have installed because it makes the process of changing the springs so much easier. It's ridiculously easier. So let me show you a bit, a bit closer uh, what, we, what we're working with, uh, the slight condition of the car before I start disassembling it and, and cleaning it and hopefully restoring and then we'll get into uh, vacuum secondary kind of shenanigans. Okay, so I, don't, so I don't know if you can see if it's very evident, but as you can see, if you look here, the, the secondary fuel bulbs have kind of flat, um, it's it there for a flat screwdriver and the front ones aren't and it has like a complete different style and writing. So this tells me that this carb has had a fuel bowl change. This is a later fuel bowl. This didn't come with the carb. One thing that tells you that this is a relatively early list 1850 is this, this, this long uh, vent tubes here. These are characteristics of like the earliest runs of list 1850. And then obviously what we've got here is my quick change kit, uh, which we're going to talk about a lot more uh, about this unit. So what I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to try to disassemble this, uh, see what's the condition of the unit inside, and then try and see if I can if I can either match the bowls or try to get a, a primary bowl that is the right uh, model, so so that at least it, it doesn't look a bit goofy uh, like it is now. So let's try and disassemble this and let's start the work of restoration. Okay, so whilst there, there's going to be no prices for guessing that this carb had been rebuilt, obviously you saw in the, in the primary fuel bowl that it was new and it has this uh, nice kind of reusable fuel gaskets that they're really not. Uh, but they're in actually quite good nick, this fuel, the, these gaskets. But, so this carb had been rebuilt, but it had been rebuilt incorrectly. So I'm going to show you now. Uh, because this is something that I've seen before um, happening in, in carburetors that people rebuild them incorrectly in such a way that make these carbs perform 
very badly. What this is essentially is that somebody put an incorrect gasket here. It, it, this is, as you can see, the gasket here is, is larger than the hole here. So let's see if we can see it, uh, kind of how the engine would see it. I need to put the camera right, literally right against it. So I don't know, so I, I think you can see it there that well, what's happening here is the gasket is essentially making this hole smaller than what it is. So that would mean that the engine would think that it has a much smaller carburetor in the engine. Uh, so that's why you should never do that. So this is probably something that bought a kit and just, you know, put the gasket on. Yeah, this is good enough. Actually, this is incorrect. The other thing that was incorrect as well is that there was no, uh, the check valve in the accelerator pump wasn't present. So that's generally not a winner. And also you can see here, this, this is typical what happens with somebody reinstalls a carburetor and doesn't clean the fuel lines because this is corrosion that is either in the tank or in the lines in the in the fuel system so obviously this carb like wasn't going to work so all of this bits and bobs we need to uh sort out but i just wanted to give you that kind of friendly warning about the gaskets okay so now what we need to do is we need to start uh, doing doing the cleaning process and once we've done the cleaning process we're going to start discussing a bit more about this kind of quick change kit okay so it's been kind of a few days um, since, since i last worked on it but now um i'm getting ready to you know slam this unit together and start working on you know the main topic of this video which is going to be this kind of quick change a kit how it works but first I need to just you know slam this unit together so I thought it's a good opportunity to show you kind of a bit of the stuff we've done um, and some other you know details that are slightly cosmetic not functional but you know they make up you know up to the appearance of the unit so here it goes I've, as you've seen when this car came through it had a gasket that was kind of much too thin thick here so therefore it was obstructing the flow um, so we, we we don't want that and then the other thing we've done is we've done some chemical blacking uh, of all the metal surfaces so actually the both the shafts um, and the throttle plates look like brand new um, which is you know quite important for the appearance of the unit and talking about appearance, there, there are a couple of things. Um, so let me show you. So this is the fuel bowl that came in the primary and it's a kind of later kind of style fuel bowl. So what I'm going to put is I'm going to put like an earlier um, style fuel bowl that is more in keeping with the fuel bowl in the secondary. So this is what, what it came, this is the original fuel bowl of the carb. And this one is a bit more in keeping with the original, what would have been the original fuel bowl of the carb. Also, this is purely cosmetic again, but I'm going to replace uh, the secondary, um, the secondary screws with this where slotted. I'm going to put this hex ones, which are going to match with the primary screws as well. I mean, there's this is sort of little details, but they make up for the appearance of the unit so now what we need to do is just very quickly you know just put this unit together um obviously uh, everything in here has been kind of thoroughly cleaned uh, so it's ready to you know go back together with fresh gaskets also uh, you know fresh power valve fresh needle and seat uh, assemblies um correct um Correct jets because it came with 68 and it and it and it needs 66s. So therefore, again, that's another detail checking the manual uh, that is all good. So I think we're ready now to kind of put this unit back together and start discussing about 
you know, what do we do with this quick change kit? Okay, so as you can see, the unit is now in the in, in the cup, and I'm going to show you first of all the uh, the different components that come in a kit. So the, if you want to put it, so the first one is this that I'm holding here. This is an O-ring that's going to go here. I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you in a minute uh, what it's like. And then the other thing is something like this, which is a spring kit. Yeah. This is like full of springs, and what they do is they either have a collar or a collar there at the at the tip, and I've got a very handy chart here that explains what the different colors are. So then they go by low. So your white is the lightest color, uh, the lightest load. Then you've got yellow, purple plain brown and black with black being your heaviest they go brown and black being the heaviest um, so therefore what what you can do with this is you can start kind of going lighter and lighter until the car is kind of happy with that spring yeah but what's the beauty of having this quick change kit is that you can change it on the fly without having to disassemble the car let me show you so first of all um well, what is happening here is that there is one uh one screw there that is inaccessible when the vacuum port is um, installed so that's number one so basically if i want to take this out I, can, I just need to take this two screws that I'm showing here and this this is the beauty of the unit that you can change it so you take this so you take this top off and you replace whatever screw with the one you're looking for for your engine let's say what, what it needs and also it has another very important um, use which is which I'm going to demonstrate here so because well, you can see here this is like a standard um a standard vacuum pod let me get a a top so i can show you yeah so this this would be a a top i mean it, it's not it's, it's not the same one but for illustration purposes it would be okay so what you do is you put is you put your spring like this and you try to seat this here yeah so this process doing it like this this process can be quite fiddly yeah because you need to get this diaphragm like so yeah you need to you needed to put it square on the base and then you need to try and try and install the top with the spring in a way that it doesn't compress the diaphragm as it's happening there so, so uh, and you see so so here's a problem that sometimes if you're not if you're not very careful what you can do when you when you install this like so is you can damage the diaphragm yeah so it goes a bit Kind of catty wampus there i mean here i mean i've done it and, and it's okay because i've got you know a little bit of practice but if you start kind of switching over the tops well what what happens is that the diaphragm goes a bit like that and it can be very difficult um, to reinstall and also um the diaphragm can sometimes especially the edges around here they might start to uh, break so so that's what can break diaphragms whilst in there if I if I if I if I take this top off the diaphragm won't be them harmed so let me show you very quickly uh, what I'm on about so if you just loosen up this screws there we go 
we got the diaphragm still held in place there uh, by the other two screws and the only thing I need to do is replace the um, the spring. In this case we've got a purple spring which is kind of the medium the medium one. If I wanted a lighter spring than the purple I could always try with a yellow spring which is this one. Yeah so that's and kind of you you might want to change kind of the gasket or not this gasket seems seems to be okay seems to be sealing so that's okay so you can kind of reinstall this uh, back up I have to kind of give, give it a little clean but basically like this and you just re reinstall the screws and that's it you're golden you've changed your screw so that's why this unit is so um, useful as a tuning aid for holly carbs so anyway I thought uh, I hope you find this you know a bit useful and um, I mean this this is quite a neat feature to have in a carb especially if you're tuning it you don't know what the engine wants this is this is quite quite actually quite a good unit so I want to say thank you very much for watching this episode and if you've got any questions put it down in the comments and if not I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.